So hey, knowing what we know right now about making the right flows and all the heuristics and all that, uh, it seems like the high fidelity design or the final polished design is gonna be really difficult, like this Contra game. Hey, hey, hey. So yeah, high fidelity is basically something that looks good, that looks polished enough to be perceived as the final finished product. Oh, that's a nice weapon. Okay, so um, by real finished product we mean something that looks polished enough and complete enough that you're not gonna mistake it for a wireframe. An even better weapon and there are of course two levels of, of high fidelity designs uh, one level is uh, just close enough to high fidelity so you can actually user test it and the other one is the sort of really final polished 100% pixel perfect uh, visual design so the process to to create oh that was uh, really unexpected the process to creating a high fidelity design is simple. You start with a couple of very first initial screens and you create a unique design style for it. So you pick the fonts, the colors, you pick uh, the spacing, the gradients, the backgrounds, the types of photos that you're gonna be using. Okay, got it. And all that and you create a consistent style so you create something that looks good on those couple of main screens and of course it's best to design the sort of most important screens that you have <laughs> and that is a fun game it's, it's really difficult I mean like some the games back then used to be done in a way that just one little bullet and you're dead there's no regenerating health there's no hints there's no game doing stuff for you so the goal of those first initial screens is to define the main components of uh, what you're gonna build. So we define all the buttons, the form elements, the backgrounds and things like that. And then basically you start putting it together like Lego bricks in a way. And once you have that, there is only one remaining thing that's really important. And um, a lot of people forget about it because uh, they focus too much on having a design system or having that set of components that is gonna solve all of their problems. But it's really not that simple because for a product to be successful, it needs some sort of uh, very distinguishing uh, trait of it. So it has to be, uh, it has to stand on its own. It has to look like it's uh, a unique experience, a unique product. So it needs some sort of visual flair. You can think of it like a cherry on top of uh, the design that you already have. And that can be anything. That can be a set of colorful dots, that can be an airplane bombing you, or um, just anything, including different animations and transitions. And of course, it's best not to go overboard with, uh, with that little cherry on top, because it has to be just uh, big enough so um, it adds that style, it adds that characteristic, but it can't be overwhelming. So it can't be like everything animates or it can't be just uh, completely overboard to a point where uh, it's impossible to actually read the project because it's completely messed up visually. Okay, this one is, yay. Um, so, you need that characteristic, you need that defining visual style, but just make it uh, subtle enough so it's there and uh, it's easily recognizable, but it's not completely over the top. I love how it only animated the flames when you moved the character. But in a world of design systems everywhere and trying to systemize everything, some people think that this approach of having a component library is gonna solve all the problems and make everything beautiful. And while it will make it usable and it will make the process uh, a lot more streamlined and faster, it's not gonna make the product stand out and it's not gonna make it being loved by people. So if you want the product to be loved, you need to create this sort of defining thing that it does. Okay, this is a little bit more difficult than I remember. Mm -hmm. 
and I died and I also killed the monster, so yeah. So to summarize the approach, uh, start with a couple of screens and try to make them unique to the product. Then turn those screens into components for a design system and uh, turn those uh, defining characteristics into the things that will make the product stand out because it has to stand out. It can't really look, if you want a product to be successful, it really cannot look like a default template from material design or from some other design system. It has to be unique in a way that people will recognize it instantly. Like, oh, that's the app that has those little dots or animated circles in, uh, in their avatars. And as I said, you can achieve that with background shapes. You can achieve that with some animations that are unique to your product. And high fidelity, the real high fidelity and why we really like products on Dribble and things like that is due to the fact that they have those, uh, they have those defining elements just added there. They have those uh, really weird organic shapes in the background. They have those nice gradients or they have a way of handling the photos that is making them unique to the product. And that's the whole point for high fidelity. A mix of that uniqueness and a mix of a design library and design system and design components. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button and share the video and see you next time. Cheers.